Welcome to NEB TV. Today we are talking about cell-free protein expression. In our Science in 60, Colby Stoddard from NEB's business development team gives an overview of the benefits and applications of cell-free expression. Then we will hear from Zach Sun from Tierra Biosciences and Keith Pardee from the University of Toronto and they will discuss some interesting applications that use cell-free expression in their labs. And lastly, we will hear from Paula Magnelli here at NEB, and she will discuss the workflow and benefits of NEB's new NEB Express cell-free E. coli expression system. Let's get started. Living cells can be genetically modified to perform novel functions, such as the production of recombinant proteins. However, these genetic modifications often conflict with normal cellular processes and result in sick cells or mutational events that negatively impact research efforts. These shortcomings can be overcome through removing the cellular membrane, which leaves a lysate that is rich in enzymes that can perform both transcription as well as translation. This also removes the competing interests between the cell and the researcher and creates new opportunities for the production of toxic byproducts, point of care diagnostics, as well as synthetic biology applications. The use of cell-free lysates also simplifies the research workflow since one can directly introduce DNA without the need to perform transformations and clone propagation. Lysates are also readily manipulated in high-throughput automated workflows and allow for researchers to explore more biological designs, leading to new, deeper insights into biology. Cell-free technologies are a pretty old technology. They've been around earlier than we can engineer cells. But there's really three applications that I see cell-free has been currently useful for. One is to make things. So you know, there are commercial companies that do this, a lot of uh, R&D labs that do this, but if you have proteins that are toxic or otherwise would be hard to make in cells, uh, cell-free is a really good way to not only make the product that you could then use downstream, but also understand how to make the product. So making stuff, I think, has been a historical use. But there are also two other areas where cell-free is quite useful. One is in understanding stuff. What I mean by this is if you have a set of you know, a circuit or a protein or even a cluster that makes a small molecule, understanding how that system works, that genetic system, cell-free is a great way to do that. And that's kind of what sparking a field of cell-free synthetic biology, really to start to decipher some of the rules of biology and rules of these systems. And then finally, sensing stuff. So, you know, cell-free as an application itself, if you want to do biological computation, say, to be able to sense something in the environment and do a biological response, you know, cells are really good at that, but it's very hard to program that into kind of, you know, keeping cells alive for like in field application. But cell-free as like a sensing a material, you know, is, is quite powerful too. It allows you to do kind of computation without having to maintain a cell. And so I think these three applications are pretty uh, powerful. Now, many of the challenges, uh, I think, currently are around application set of cell-free, right? It's really kind of education saying, you know, if you're doing a set of work in cells, how can cell-free help you speed up that process? And how do you kind of understand the results that you collect in cell-free, how it might influence what you do in cells? Or conversely, maybe a result isn't applicable to cells. And so I think Education is a big part of this, kind of understanding when cell-free can come handy and come into use. Tierra Biosciences is a, a company based out of Berkeley. We're using cell-free to effectively do functional genomics. When we think about cell-free, we think of it as, as a really good platform for understanding how to make things and then making things to test. And so if you have a bunch of DNA right, and you need to be able to either make the protein that's not working in your cell, or you have a lot of proteins you want to make. For us, we've built out a system that's driven by cell-free synthetic biology, some AI and automation that's able to really quickly take digital sequences of DNA uh, and then say, what does this make and what does it do? And understand really the process that goes through transcription, translation, and such. So, you know, the applications for this are really in functional genomics and also kind of in understanding complex systems. My name is Keith Pardee. I'm an assistant professor in the Faculty of Pharmacy at the University of Toronto and the Canada Research Chair in Synthetic Biology and Human Health. So the main challenge with mosquito-borne illnesses is, is really detection, right? If you know, if you have early detection that there's virus in the mosquitoes, that is soon going to translate into infections in people. And the sooner you can identify the infection in people as well as in mosquitoes, um, the more quickly you can bring those outbreaks under control 
and reduce the spread of the infection. And so providing tools for diagnostics that are more portable and low cost, our goal is to help in that, in that effort. The most sort of the largest amount of product we use from NEV is Pure Express, which is their recombinant cell-free transcription and translation um, system for protein expression. And we use this system to run our gene circuit-based diagnostics and also for running the portable manufacturing of drugs. And what we do is we freeze dry Pure Express and embed it into paper or make pellets out of it so that we can run these synthetic biology applications outside of the lab. And the goal here is to decentralize medical or healthcare capacities that are usually only in hospital settings out into the real world as diagnostics and the manufacturing of drugs. And one of the largest efforts we do is in diagnostics, molecular diagnostics, where we use the genome of a pathogen as a barcode for identifying the presence of that pathogen. And one of those projects um, that's sort of our flagship project is for the detection of Zika and chikungunya in Latin America. And so this project involves eight labs in five countries and our partners in Brazil, Bogota or Colombia and Ecuador are collecting samples and running our technology down there to determine the presence of the virus and, and basically establish the, the assay. So we're speaking with Paula Magnelli, who is an application and development scientist here at NEB. Hi, Paula. Hi, Dina. How are you? Good, thank you. So could you tell us a little bit about the challenges associated with extract-based cell-free expression? Um, I would say the biggest challenge is variation. When you are trying to express a protein using a cell-based uh, in vitro system, it is difficult to obtain the same result mm -hmm. every time. Another uh, common challenge is the fact that in a cell-free environment, uh, some proteins uh, have a difficult time uh, with folding and with the formation of the correct disulfide bonds. Mm -hmm. And a final challenge is the concern that man, many scientists have of, of whether this type of reaction that is in, in vitro, is not a live cell, will be able to achieve the high level of proteins ex expressions that they require for their um, uh, experiments. So you were involved in the development of NEB's new NEB Express cell-free expression yes. kit, correct? Yes. Could you talk a little bit about some of the advantages of using that kit? Yes. Uh, we, um, one of our main goals when we developed this was to reduce the variability. This is important because in a um, protein evolution experiment, in, a, uh, in the discovery of a new protein variation, you need to capture those uh, small differences in performance, small differences in expression levels, and if a system has too much variability, that will mean that you don't really know if the differences that you observe are real or are just error. Mm -hmm. Another feature that we really wanted this kit to have was compatibility with the disulfide bond enhancer. It assists in combination with the NEB Express uh, kit, it assists proteins that have a difficult, um, a difficult kinetics, difficult time to co to achieve the correct folding, to form the right amount and the right combination of disulfide bond uh, in the in the protein uh, sequence. Therefore, what you obtain is not only a some yield of protein, the protein that you get is in the right form is the active form. So that is a nice, uh, nice perk Great. to have. Great. And when you're talking about yields, how much protein are we talking? Um, a typical protein, I mean, not all protein mm -hmm. express at the same mm -hmm. level, but I would say that a typical protein makes uh, about a half a milligram per ml. Okay. So that will be the concentration that you get uh, at the end. That's great. And you can also uh, extend incubation time, correct? Yes. That is something that is uh, a very, very nice feature. So many proteins fold better or express better at very low temperatures. But the concern with the cell-free system is whether you could extend 
the incubation as you do with live cells mm -hmm. make a 24 hour incubation at very low temperature so your protein can express and can fold correctly and that is possible and something that is very interesting to us is that we have seen for some targets that in a short incubation time of course at 25 degrees for instance your yields are lower mm -hmm. and that's you know typical mm -hmm. but those reactions when they are incubated at 40 at uh, sorry at 24 hours the final yields can be even higher mm -hmm. than a, than an incubation at 37 degrees mm -hmm. for the same protein mm -hmm. so that gives you a lot of flexibility you can choose go short at a higher temperature or go long at a lower temperature and depending on the um, the goal of your experiment the throughput of your experiment you can have with one kit this you know um, flexibility and I think that it uh, it satisfies more different uh, types of experiments scientific projects which has you don't need to think, oh, which one it is. It does everything. So, I mean, we are actually very proud of that, um, those features. So can you walk us through the workflow for this product? Yeah, sure. Um, the workflow is very simple, and that was something that we, uh, on purpose, this is, you know, by design. The kit uh, provides four components plus uh, a positive control plasmid. So the reaction setup is very simple. First, uh, the reagents that are stored at minus 80 degrees have to be thawed on ice. Once they are completely thawed, uh, each reaction is assembled by mixing the uh, cell lysate, the extract, the uh, protein synthesis buffer, the T7 RNA polymerase, and the RNA inhibitor. And of course, your DNA of RNA template that is for your protein of interest. And also, if uh, the user wants, the reaction control can be uh, performed using our positive control plasmid. And that is incubated at the temperature that you want, typically 37. You can use a different temperature for two to four hours and then the uh, reactions are ready for analysis. And um, another advantage is once the reaction is complete, the samples are ready to run on a protein gel. The components of the NEB Express don't interfere with um, protein electrophoresis, so there is no need to uh, do an acetone precipitation or TCA precipitation before running the gel. Thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome, it was a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. If you would like to learn more about NEB's products available for cell-free protein expression, you can use the link below, where you can get access to brochures, feature articles, and other informative content. As always, if you have any suggestions for future episodes, please let us know.